I started tracking probably 20 years ago. Um, I actually started much longer. I found um, a local, uh, the county sheriff had bloodhounds and I did some work with him and then life intervened and I got into the confirmation world and then I finally went back to tracking about 20 years ago. Um, I think I, uh, my current dogs are like seven generations of tracking dogs with tracking titles. And then about mm, maybe 10, 12 years ago, I became a tracking judge just to get something to do. And then a number of years ago, I became interested in search and rescue. So I am now part of a search and rescue team with um, uh, my current certified dog is Spirit, okay, who is an otter hound. And before her, I had Finnegan, who was a certified search dog. Um, so that's who I am. That's how I got into tracking. And I promise you, I won't tell you all about tracking because I'm still learning all about tracking. Uh, all right, I overpromised on that. Sorry, people. I'll give you a brief introduction, and I'm very happy to have so many people here, and I hope that you will start tracking if you haven't or continue tracking if you've started and I hope you fall in love with it the way I have um, because I think it's wonderful. So with that, let's talk about tracking with your otter hound. Um, when I talk about uh, tracking, I'm going to use tracking, trailing. There's so many terms out there and I'm just going to use them interchangeably and what I want you to take away from all this is that tracking is, or trailing is sense specific. That simply means that um, you are training a dog to follow one specific human scent. Oops, sorry, I did something terrible. Um, and nothing else. That dog will follow the scent you instruct him to follow and ignore all other people and all other critters. So um, that is what sense specific tracking is. Some people talk about footstep tracking and I just wanna say a word about that. That's a Schutzen exercise and it's basically pretty much of an obedience exercise. We find, I found generally that Schutzen dogs are not allowed to get off the track. So they are following I don't know what they're following because generally scent does not stand still. And so when we're talking about scent, we're talking about all the invisible particles that come off of a person, including uh, skin rafts, including smells from their laundry detergent, their deodorant, their shampoo, their soap, their DNA. Um, we don't even know all the things that are involved and it comes off of every part of you. So when we talk about scent, sometimes you'll hear the word scent cone. And if you think about uh, the top of your head and an oval down to the ground, that will be a scent cone. Um, another thing I would specify is when I started early, early on in tracking, I remember somebody refused to wear rubber boots when laying a track for a tracking test because he felt that dogs couldn't smell through the rubber. Well, A, even I who have no sense of smell can smell rubber. But uh, aside from that, your scent does not come out of the bottom of your feet. So the idea that you have to follow the footstep, your scent may not be in the footstep. So let's maybe go on. <clears throat> Um, what do you need to track? Um, you need four things. It's probably the cheapest uh, and easiest um, sport in dogs to obtain. First of all, you need an owner handler or a handler, and that's you. You've got that. Um, and the second thing you need is a dog with a nose. There is a nice nose. We have dogs with noses and we have dogs with excellent noses. First point I would make is every dog can track. Um, 
my very first dog that I certified for tracking was a long-haired miniature Doxy. She was a terrific tracker, and I was so thrilled to give her her TD, to judge her for her TD, not too long after that. Here in Illinois, we have a famous TDX Yorkie, so all dogs can track. Otter hounds have a terrific advantage. They are scent hounds. Their noses are great, and they have in their background bloodhounds. So we have a pretty, I like to have all the advantages I can when I start into something, and having an otter hound is a big advantage. The other thing you will need, the two things you may have to purchase, is a long line. Okay, a long line is quite simply, um, it can be made out of any material, leather, biothane, which is kind of a synthetic, uh, cotton or nylon, up to you. If you are in AKC tracking for TD, TDU, and TDX, you need to be 20 feet behind your dog, so you'll need at least a 20, 25 foot line. In the VST, you can be 10 feet away from your dog. So you, most people use the same line and just uh, hold it, uh, you know, I coil mine in my hand. Um, so you can use the same line. Um, the, I think the nylon is the hardest on your hand. So if you decide to get a nylon one, I would wear gloves, especially if you have a hard pulling dog. And I seem to always have hard pulling dogs. Cotton is softer on your hands, but it probably will not wear as well as nylon. I do have both leather and biothane. I love leather, but in the woods or in when it's really wet or snowy, I like the biothane because it doesn't get as wet and um, take as long to dry. So it's up to you, okay? Both. Um, the line could probably cost you about 20 bucks and you can get it most places. The next and last thing you need is a harness. The harness must be non-restrictive and I have um, borrowed uh, a dummy dog and um, to show you two, not, two restrictive harnesses that you do not want to use. One is the gentle leader or sensitivity harness that has the um, you know, the, the um, ring in the front of the dog so that when the dog goes forward and you pull back, the dog comes into you, that's restricting the dog's movement. The other one is um, much more common lately, it's on the right, and that is the pink. If you could see, there's two D rings on the top and if you hook the, through the two D rings, you'll notice when you pull back, the dog's uh, will be pulled to a stop because it will pull its shoulders together. You do not want either of these. So if you have one, you can use it to walk your otter home, but don't use it to track your otter hound. What do you want to use, you might ask? I have given you three here. And what I suggest is one that has a V in front and the D-ring at the back. So the one on the left has a breastplate that has um, fleece. I hate those because fleece can mildew in the damp and it can get full of burrs. But um, lots of people love them. The one in the middle is probably a little cheaper. These are leather. You can still order nylon ones. The one in the middle does not have a breastplate, but you can see that the face goes through and then it um, hooks, um, the front legs are between the two circular parts of the leather and the rear legs are behind. The one on the right, um, I borrowed a police harness for this. I have two of these, I love them because they're so easy to put on, they're black, they're nylon, they're heavy. But if you can see where, um, it has a straight across um, uh, strap in the front of the chest and I don't recommend it because there's putting a lot of pressure on your dog as your dog tries to move its legs forward. Um, so I prefer the two on the left, the left and center one. You have to do what you like, but I would say 
get a non-restrictive harness, you cannot track with a restrictive harness, not only in AKC or any way, because the joy of tracking is the dog's in charge. That's why they love it, because we're the dope on the rope that follows behind them, and they have the nose, they have the scent, and we should just um, learn to read them, and that's not easy. Okay. So that's, you're equipped, 40 bucks, you're out in the woods or out in the field and you're ready to track. And why, what kind of tracking opportunities do you have? I highly recommend AKC tracking. You can get titles. And I think of AKC tracking as basically AKC's version of search tra uh, tracking in many ways. Um, like any other tracking, you are following a, scent, a specific scent, but AKC has set up rules. So in these rules, the dog must follow the track that a track layer lays and um, indicate any article on the track as well as the final article. There are four different tracking tests you can enter, but before you enter one, a dog must be certified by an AKC judge or, and this is new, somebody who has at least a TDX in tracking for the last few years. And the way they are certified is the judge or the tracking person lays a, a track that's equivalent to either a TD or a TDU. If the dog passes and finishes that track, then they are given four certifications. In order to enter either a TD or a TDU, you have to submit your entry with a certification. Why? Um, tracking is the most supportive, fun, and labor-intensive part of the AKC. To do, um, I just judged a, an eight dog, a four Ts and four Xs last weekend, and each T needed a track layer. Each TDX needed a track layer and two cross track layers. We needed a, a secretary, a head track layer, two judges, um, and that's just to put on a test. So um, the most tests we can put on here are probably eight T's. Um, some places can get in 12, but we don't have the room. You can only put in six TDXs and six VSTs. So there's high demand to get into the tests, and that's why we don't want somebody who's tracked once to say, I think I'll try a test. I have a lot of money and nothing to do with it. I'll go on Sunday. We want dogs that can do it to enter, okay? So you do need a certification. Eileen? Yeah. Can I interrupt you? Can you tell us what the different letters mean? The TD, TDU, TDU? Yeah. I want to go in. TD is tracking dog. That's the first title. Tracking dog. It's kind of like CD in obedience, companion dog. This is tracking dog. And to get your tracking dog title, you have to successfully complete a track that's 440 to 500 yards long, aged anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours. It has three to five turns, both left and right. All but one must be 90 degree turns. And at the start, there will be two flags 30 yards apart. The first flag is the start flag and it has the start article. The start article is what the, tells the dog what uh, scent to follow. It is your track layers article, okay? And the second flag tells you the direction of the track. So you know that the track goes toward the second leg. After that, there are no more flags. Your dog has to tell you. Um, after you finish, um, you will find a glove at the end, and that's when you get your TD. People will jump up and down, cheer. Uh, judges hug you. It's really positive. Now we're waving and rubbing elbows but it's still very exciting. And probably about 50% of the dogs in a, in a tracking test will pass, okay? Um, the TDU is a new version and it's an alternate 
to the TD. It is not something in addition. The TDU was designed for areas where there aren't a lot of fields, okay, especially in the east. So they looked at using more park areas and areas that may have hard surfaces, but still is closer to a TD. So the TD is the same length and same age and has the same two start flags as a TD. But 10 to 40% of the track will be on non-vegetative, I call it hard surface. There is an alter, also an intermediate article to help the dog on a TDU. Um, the, there is never a turn on hard surface, but you do have to go over it. And those are like sidewalks, gravel paths, things you might find in a local park. And the term TDU simply means tracking dog urban. Okay, so the U is urban. There's two more. Uh, the TDX is tracking dog excellent. And there's a major difference between the TD and the TDU and the TDX. One, the length is twice as long. It's 800 to 1,000 yards. Aged three to five hours. Turns five to seven. At least one each has to be a 90 degree left and right. There is one flag at the start with the article. Um, the dog has to tell you the direction of the track. There's no indication of that. There is a start article, two intermediate articles, and a final article, usually a glove. Also, there are at two points on the track, we have two people other than the track layer crossing the track. So the dog must follow the prime track layer and discriminate between that person's scent and the scent of these other two people. And they walk um, about an hour and a half after the track layer, they go over it. There's also two obstacles. They can be scenting or physical obstacles. A scenting obstacle will be a major change of cover across of a road, a parking lot, uh, woods are, is a scenting obstacle. Physical obstacles may be a small stream, uh, a down tree, a short fence, okay? And you have to have two obstacles, two cross tracks, and four articles. And then you get a tracking dog, excellent title. And maybe about 25 to 30% of the dogs who run a TDX get the title, okay? And the VST is variable surface tracking. It is 600 to 800 yards, age three to five hours, four to six turns, including the infamous moment of truth turn, which is where most people have the most trouble. And that is a turn in pavement that is non-fringible, which simply means you can't cut it by going over the grass. So it's the middle of a parking lot, usually in an industrial area. The track covers three different surfaces and at least one third to two thirds of the track must be on hard surfaces, which could be hard pan, gravel, sand, asphalt, concrete. There is a start article and a start flag two intermediate articles and a final article. The articles, however, must be different materials, fabric, leather, plastic, and metal. And about 10% of the dogs who, uh, who attempt a VST get it. Um, and if you get a TD, a TDX, and a VST, you are a champion tracker. And that's a prestigious like a champion obedience arch. So it's pretty impressive. Um, Eileen, mm -hmm. if I might interject, uh, for the articles, is there a specific size that's deemed necessary or? Um, usually uh, four to six inches, somewhere around there. Um, most people use socks. You know, all those socks that go into a washing machine as in a, a couple and come mm -hmm. out divorced mm -hmm. and you have a single one, those are great tracking articles. Um, when you throw away your jeans, I, I, people often cut out the pockets because you can stick food in there uh, when you're training a dog. Any kind of washcloths, hot pans, bandanas, anything. 
and for the T and the X, they're material. But the BST, you have urban setting, you have fabric, you have leather, you have plastic and metal, and you have to have those four. Cool, thank you. I have a question, Eileen. Are yeah. there time limits on each of those? There's no time limits. Uh, you can be whistled off if your dog quits working. So if a dog sits down and just lies down and says, fully on you, um, I've had dogs that just sit there and look at their handler and say, I'm sorry, I didn't put tracking on my calendar today. I wanted to do my nails. And, you know, so sometimes they quit. Sometimes they quit because the owner didn't follow them. <laughs> and they just say, okay, you figure it out. So, but usually, I mean, it can take an hour. I've, I've followed TDXs that can take almost an hour. As long as the dog keeps working, this is not timed. And if your dog stops working, are they, how long before the judge says, sorry, you're done? It's um, up to the judge. I mean, in the same way that if a dog overshoots a turn, how far do you go before you whistle the dog off? Um, Judges try to give you every opportunity to recover. But if a dog is sitting there staring at you and staring at you and not moving, you know, it's obvious not going to get this wonderful burst of energy and finish the track out of the blue. So, yeah. But that's not very common. Okay, so that's an awful lot. You can get a tracking booklet that explains this. But um, basically, that's what I recommend. You can get titles, you can have fun. And the best thing about tracking is everybody who's out there for two days on the weekend, laying track, carrying poles, plotting tracks, wants you to get the title. And there is, it's the most supportive of all of the AKC events, okay? So you'll have fun. Now, when and how do I start? Okay, um, you're never too young. This is Higgins, my puppy, at nine weeks. He was uh, learning how to track. And you're never too old. And the bottom photo is his great-great-grandmother <laughs> who started tracking when she was nine years old and got her title at nine and a half. So there's nine years separating them and they're both tracking. Um, I thought she had the record, but then her mother decided to fool her and she got her tracking title at nine years and three quarters. So she lost the battle. How do you start? First of all, make it fun. Um, dogs have their noses. You have to teach them. A dog walking along, putting its nose down is not tracking. It's having a great time investigating the world. So you have to show it how to follow a track. That is not as difficult as trying to read your dog after it knows that. So how do you start? There's several ways. Take a young puppy, and I would say if it's six months or older and loves food, find out what it loves. Does it love food? If it's an otter home, probably. Does it love toys above all things? If it's a golden retriever or a German shepherd, probably toy driven. Um, and then I start with all those old socks and stuff and have somebody lay you a track. Um, put down an article, show, or first of all, I usually feed the dogs so they think I'm worth following. In other words, I'm the Pez dispenser with a little hot dogs or cheese curds and they love me. So they want to find me because I give them food. So then I put down an article, walk a few steps back, and then I'll put a second article back a few yards and I'll put some food on it. And then I'll walk back a few more yards and put another article on, down with food on it. Then I always make a turn from the very beginning, okay? And I try to make a turn across a driveway. I want my dog to think different surfaces are perfectly natural and grass is just the same as concrete or asphalt. So I always try to cross hard surface on the turn. That's just me, you don't have to do it. And after the turn, I put another article with food on it 
And then I try to hide behind a tree or something so they don't see me. And then the person will let the dog go. Now, usually the dog will run to the food and run to the next piece of food, and that's okay. Because right now they're getting the idea of putting their nose down on the track and following along. Um, then if I'm doing the articles with food, I will continue doing that, but I might um, space the articles further away, take food off some of them, and then I will age the track more. And after they are doing it pretty well, I'll add another leg and another turn. So I'll make the track longer. I will not usually um, add both age and distance at the same time. So I, you know, if you're going longer, don't add them a lot of age. I never put an article on the turn. I always put it after the turn because dogs fail and get in trouble because they miss a turn or they overshoot a turn or they go the wrong way on a turn. If you put the article on the turn, you're making a scent pool, which is harder for them to track. So put it after the turn and not on the turn. Eileen? Mm -hmm. Sorry for the interruption. Um, when you first start, how far away do you have the articles? And then at what increments do you move them? It depends. Um, I eyeball this. I'm not very good, but so I might, if it's a younger puppy, I may put it closer together, um, say five to seven yards, 10 yards. Um, again, a lot of the distance depends on the focus of the dog. The younger the dog, you know, it's like, oh, air, you know, I forgot what I'm doing. So the younger puppy, I actually start more with a runaway and I'll talk about that. Um, but the articles with food is the way I've done it uh, for years. And, um, you know, after a while, the dogs will not look for food. They, my dogs will run past food on a track because they love the idea of the scent. They just love following scent. Um, and you got to make it fun. When you get to the end, whoever is at the end, or if you have just an article at the end, you need to make this the best party in the world. You need to jump up and down, whoop it up, bring out your steak, um, your pasta, whatever. So your dog thinks that nothing compares to tracking. And so that's important. Okay. I like to use, we call uh, these, there's all kinds of terms, so I'm just going to explain it. Um, a runaway is where somebody else holds your puppy because you're the most important thing in its life because you feed it. And um, you stand there and wave at your puppy, jump up and down, throw an article down, start running, have the person turn the dog away, you hide behind a bush and then the dog will go after you because of course you're his owner and you're fun. And when the dog gets to you, you jump up and down and just praise that dog to the hilt. Okay. And runaways are highly motivational. I use them depending on the dog. Some dogs are so, um, tied to their owner that that's they won't leave their owner for somebody else so that's a good way to do it um there's lots of techniques to start i don't know who all's on this but if there are trackers there they probably got just as good ways to start um you know i the main important thing is make it fun and you've got such an advantage with an otter home because they put their nose uh, is down um, the very first time I had to teach a dog, not an otter hound, um, how to track, it didn't know how to put its nose down. It was not. <laughs> and for the first time I had to go, oh my God, what do I do? You know? So, you know, sometimes you learn a lot <laughs> the hard way. So that's some of the ways I would just go out and start. The best way to start is to find a partner 
and to do it together because, um, you know, that'll keep you going. It's kind of like exercising or walking in the park, you know, it's always nice to have somebody else do it. Or contact an AKC tracking judge and you will see that if you go to akc.org, um, they have a judge's directory and they will direct them by confirmation, obedience, tracking, um, and you can look up by state and try to find a judge in your area. Call that judge, ask if they teach tracking, most of them will, or if they know somebody who will, or if they know a tracking club, okay? And that's the best way to do it. I'm gonna stop there and add that I put something on to make it fun. When you're done, go to youtube.com and look up Ray the Tracking Dog. And you will have a great lesson from dog's point of view in tracking. So Ray the Tracking Dog, I love him. Okay, questions? We had a couple questions. Um, Carol Nelson would like to know where you get your harnesses, leads, and that kind of thing. Is there a website or a store? Yeah, there's a lot of stores. Um, I like Bridgeport harnesses, but I like their leather. They're strong. J&J &J has harnesses. Elite Canine has harnesses. What you prob They used to have harnesses at PetSmart and Petco. All you want is the D-ring in the back, you know, that slides in a V over your neck, uh, over the head and goes to a V so it's not restricting your shoulders. I started looking for them and they're not there anymore. Now they've got all these fancy ones that are all knit. Um, I think Spirit would probably go through that very quickly. Um, and they also have the D, double D-rings. You don't want that. A lot of the gentle leaders that pull dogs in. Everybody's trying to keep your dog from, you know, pulling you over when you're walking, but you want a non-restrictive. So um, if you need some sources, contact me. I'll be glad to do it. I have to buy a harness, I think, now because somebody chewed the one I've been using. Uh Cindy asks, is a good nose for tracking hereditary? How do you know that you have a good tracking dog? I think <laughs> Bev Kreisha always says she's had a dog that didn't like it. I have never had a dog that didn't get a tea. Um, mostly some of them, they can all track. I think a lot of it is um, make it fun, make it the most fun. Um, that motivates them. Starting early helps, you know. Um, and if your dog doesn't like it, I am one of the first people who says, do something else. Or, you know, if you have multiple dogs, try another dog. Um, not all my dogs are champion trackers. Um, some of it's me, some of it's them. Vi has a T, but she was a, she wanted to do therapy work and that's what she did. So I'm pretty, I'm one of those, I like life to be easy. So if a dog <laughs> wants to do something, I let it do it because it makes my life easier. Um, um, we have a couple, we have a couple more questions. Sure. Uh, Lindsay would like to know, do you use keywords to start and move your dog on? Yes. Um, my first, uh, you need to give it once the, the command to track. Whether you say go track, um, I use go find, I don't, you know, you can say sneeze, whatever, but you, it is the word that tells your dog to go and follow that scent. Um, and you use it once, you don't use it all during the track because if your dog is off and you tell them to follow it and they're on a squirrel, you're in trouble. So um, use, a lot of people use track. Okay. I can still find, um, after a while they know what they're doing so you don't even, and sometimes I try to use two. I use a take scent command 
and then a track. And I don't use it in AKC tracking. I use it in search work for, because I have an article and I don't want to be, I, Spirit's pretty strong, polar and fast. And I don't want to be fumbling with something while she's tearing down the street. So <laughs> then shut up. <laughs> if you're in, and this is where Ray the tracking dog is wonderful. Um, I have been behind people. You just want to hit them. They go, track, 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 track. And I mean, I'm going crazy. And you think the dog is probably going to turn around and just, you know, go, yeah. Um, you know, just let them do their job. I use let's go. If my dog is investigating where another dog peed or something, I sometimes will use leave it, depending if there's some poop. My dogs aren't really excited about goose poop, but some dogs love it. So I think you need three things. Track, leave it, and let's go. And after that, shut up. <laughs> and I've been, gonna, yeah. That was gonna be my next comparison. So it's probably not like agility when you wanna ramp them up, but. Uh, some dogs you might want to ramp up. I try very hard not to ramp my dogs up. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So next couple questions. Um, let's see. Ooh. Where did that go? Ah, when are you considering doing another tracking education? Oh, good. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, we're going to be doing some tracking uh, at the supported entry in Purina Farms next May. And we just slated a tracking weekend in Illinois for June. And it, we did it very early in June, um, two years ago this year, we were gonna do it, but COVID happened. Um, so we are going to do it probably in middle to late June of 2021. Where in Illinois is that? It's around the corner from me. <laughs> no, I, I used Shana Lake State Park last year. Um, we had a wonderful um, shelter. The people are wonderful. Um, it's a huge park, so we can move around. Um, there's lots of trails, lots of empty spaces. There are hotels. Uh, and it's a state park. You can camp there if you're a camper. So um, we'll, we'll more than likely go back there. Cool. Um, Anna like would like to know, uh, are there any other disqualifications that can happen during the track? Um, yeah. Your dog goes off track, stops working, or you guide your dog. Um, the dog has to do the track. How Guiding is hard to tell. Um, but for example, if you decide the dog is overshot and the dog is still going forward and you turn around and walk backwards, <laughs> That's guiding. The dog has to come back to the track. So you really have to let the dog work. Um, so guiding is um, a disqualification and you will get whistled for it. Is he eliminating on the track? No. Disqualification? No. Cool. The, the other thing is um, at what point, and I, I'm assuming it's based on the judge too, but at what point can the dog get off the track and the judge is like, nope, there's no hope of them getting back on it. Like, is there, it's like 50 feet off the trail and. It's hard to say because it depends. Sometimes it, uh, they're going, if depending on the direction, if they're going to another track and they can ruin the next track, you have to whistle them. Mm -hmm. um, if usually it's when they look like they can't recover, which yeah. to me, if the dog, misses a turn and is heading for Iowa at a hood clip. And, you know, obviously either that or a Culver's and, you know, that. It, 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 <laughs> if the dog is searching and working, that's a different matter. And you get to know the difference just by watching. I would say if you are at all interested in tracking, find a tracking test in your area. This is the time we have them in fall and spring. They were all canceled in spring, but they are now being held in fall. Go, offer to carry poles, offer to lay track. Um, just watch it. You can follow a track. 
and you will learn more than so much more by doing it by going to a tracking test and they always need people uh they need you don't have to know anything about cross or about tracking to be a cross track layer or a pole carrier i lay track before i ever um you know when i was very new so and i learned a lot awesome uh, Cindy would like to know, do you have any suggestions for the best places to uh, practice? And going off of that, would heavily used areas in your home be considered scent pools? I wouldn't stay, I wouldn't track at home. I would go to, um, the best place around me is forest preserves. Forest preserves, and when you get to VST, industrial parks, community colleges, colleges where you have buildings and mowed grass and um, parking lots. When you're doing T's and TDXs, I would go to um, a forest preserve, a state park, because you have a lot of um, area, tracking takes area, you uh, uh, are Often you will find woods that you can go into. So you'll find all of the different things you need to train for. Sweet. And it looks like we had a couple of questions sent in from Tom Devlin. Uh, the first of which says, uh, what's the best way to train our pups to acknowledge the glove or article at the end of the track? Tom, you had two uh, questions. One was about man trailing and yes. um, I, otter hounds are not naturally interested in articles. I'll say that. Um, I've had dogs that barely acknowledged an article as they flew by. Um, food is, whatever they love the best is the best thing I would use. So if they have an absolute favorite toy, they only get the toy at the end of the track. If they have an absolute favorite food, that's what is on the glove at the end. To make them notice articles, I try to put food under the article so they have to kind of put their nose on the article and maybe move it to get the food. The problem with that is sometimes they get it, it's full of ants, but then they get extra protein. Um, but that's where pockets come in handy because you can stick the food in the pocket and they have to get, uh, you know, sometimes I stick it in the, in the top of the sock. So they have to really work at it and then they get used to putting their nose on. Um, so that's, um, that's what I do, you know, and I make it good food. It's, you know, milk bones just don't, don't mm -hmm. make it. I love how creative everything is too. It's like there's so many different ways that things can work. Oh yeah, it was a funny story about a dog who um, got ice cream every time they tracked at the end. Lucky dog. Oh man. And so at the test, the person's going, "Get your ice cream," you know, which was the wildest tracking story, you know. Where do I sign up? I won't be the best center, but yeah, <laughs> I don't think about dogs ice cream at the end, so. Um, but yeah, and I'm not sure what you meant by man trailing because, you know, there's so many terms. Man trailing to me is, um, it's the bloodhound performance test. In other words, it's done by bloodhound people and they have to find a person. And if your dog is doing that, maybe that's why articles aren't as much fun because I'll tell you honestly, finding somebody who makes a big deal out of your dog. Um, Spirit does not get food. She loves finding the person. She cries, she whines, she collapses on the person. And so, yeah, um, when she ran her tea, I wasn't sure she would stop at that glove because it wasn't much fun, but she did. So I was okay with that. Um, so I would try, you know, I've used toys. I've used, you know, I've had goldens. I put a tennis ball down. Nothing talks to a golden like a tennis ball. And so you just have to be kind of creative. What, what would lead your dog, what would make your dog happy with it, associated with an article? 
And the second question that he had that you kind of touched on was, uh, do you feel man trailing is counterproductive to AKC tracking requirements? No, but if you're having trouble with articles, then maybe you want to do articles with man trailing. You know, I, I haven't done man trailing, so I don't know if, I mean, I kind of know what it is. Um, but if you're looking for titles, go to AKC Tracking, you know, because the Bloodhounds, that's a Bloodhound title, I believe, if it's the man trailing I'm thinking of. And again, people use tracking, trailing, man trailing, all interchangeably. All of them are sense specific trailing. All righty. Uh, Anna would like to talk about the terrain. How important is it to train the dog in high grass or like swamp water? Well, it's no fun to do swamp water. Um, <laughs> let me tell you, I, I have a horrible story of a seminar where I dropped the lead in the swamp. It wasn't pretty. Anyway, um, you, you know, for a tea, you're not, you're going to have, a tea has to have the same um, vegetation all the way through. So you're not going to have a radical change. You're not going to cross a road. You're not going to go in the woods. I think you should start training both. Um, here in the Midwest, our tracks are all very heavy cover. Okay. We just had a test that had mowed grass, alfalfa. It was very short. I've never been in that. I've been in teas where you couldn't, where the Turkey grass was six feet tall. Um, it depends on where you are and what the terrain is like. But again, if you're going to go on past the tee, I would train in all kinds of cover. I would train in all kinds of weather. Um, I would train when it's cold. I would train when it's hot, although not too hot. I would train in rain. I would train in snow. I would certainly train when it's windy. They will run TDs and TDXs in the snow. They won't run VST because, of course, a snow-covered field is only one surface. So, yeah, you need three surfaces. But, yeah. So, the more you... At once your dog has do, got the hang of it and you're starting to read your dog, and that's the hardest part. 90% of it is spending your life trying to read what your dog is telling you. And I wonder what they think about us. They're probably saying... How come humans are so dumb? I showed her three times and she just didn't catch it. She doesn't believe me. She thinks she can smell. Um, you know, so a lot, that's what the big work is, okay? When you're just starting out, do you start out with like lighter vegetation or what's, what's like the chain of increasing there? Do you start like with like less traveled areas or more traveled areas or less vegetation or more vegetation or dry or a field. And that's why I would never do it at my house. Um, I would do it at a field where other people aren't there. If your dog is young, you don't want distractions. You don't want competing scents when you start, when you're ready for tests or you get more advanced, you want distractions. I love to train in high wind. And when I go into a test, I pray to God there is no high wind because that does interesting things with scent. It moves scent. Um, so, you know, tr the more you can train, the better. But I would train, uh, start off with maybe not your front lawn mowing mode, but maybe six inch field, you know, um, deep enough that, you know, they get through it. I would not put a dog in grass over its head to start. I once laid a track for poor Finn and, you know, usually, and, and I ran through it and it was like to my shoulders and I let it sit for three hours. I went back and of course you could, there was no air. The dog was just working against foliage. He did it, but I apologized and I never did it again. So, you know, when you're starting out, it, Lower grass, yes. And always, always, always mark your turns and know where your track goes. Train, don't test. 
some people are, I want to, I want to do it. I want, don't tell me where it goes. Well, then you can't read your dog because you don't know what your dog does when it gets to a corner. You don't know how your dog is going to behave in certain situations unless you know where the dog is on the track. So mark your tracks. Okay. How do you do that? What's the best way to do that? You can get those little flags. You can get, <laughs> I like clothespins with uh, surveyor's tape attached because I can mark um, a tree or a bush and I can grab it as I go past, you know, um, and I don't have to carry pointy flags. Um, that's if I'm laying my own track. If somebody else is laying it, yeah, those little flags at the hardware store, you can get batches of them. Uh, surveyor's tape. So a, a couple of slides back, you had mentioned that one of the titles requires a 90 degree turn. Mm -hmm. uh, for the rest of the turns in the, uh, when you lay a track, uh, is it, does it have to be a certain degree turn? Or can it just be like a very slight, hey, you're now going, you know, five degrees left? In AKC tracking, you have definite turns to make. And they're not curves, they're not kind of ovals. Um, you either have a 90 degree turn or what we call an open turn, which would be more than 90, you never have an acute turn. That would be less than 90, okay? Um, so yes, you have um, open turns as we call them, say might be 120, um, but you would never have like a 45 degree angle because then your, you know, your scent is going to be pulling from the last leg. There's a whole bunch of rules on how far you can have a leg from another leg, but you don't have to worry about that when you're starting. Cool. Okay, I have a few more things and then I'll answer more questions if you want. Yeah. I just thought I'd say a word about search and rescue because people ask me about this. I recommend you do AKC tracking unless you are independently wealthy, not working, don't matter, don't care if you sleep, and love getting up in the middle of the night in snow and rain and running out to look for somebody. Um, okay, so if you're a search and re rescue, you are part of a team. It's a professional team. The dogs are nationally credentialed. Um, you work with official organizations. You're called out by police, sheriff, FEMA, Forest Preserve Police, um, sometimes search and rescue councils. Okay. You never, ever go out as a lone ranger. You never hear of a search and just show up. If you're not in, I've been on searches where the first thing they say is, if you have not been invited by our agency, please leave. So, you know, you never know when you're on a search, when it can turn into a criminal situation, okay? Saying that, we do not chase armed robbers, okay? <laughs> but they leave that to the professionals. But there are certain kinds of search, and I've mentioned four. Avalanche is not as common here as it is in the Alps, obviously, but you get it in, Rocky, in the Rockies where you have a snow or a north, probably in Canada, uh, you have an avalanche and um, people are missing. Usually, I would never do this because they usually fly you in by helicopter and you drop in and the dog goes to find whoever may be stranded and buried under the snow, okay? It's beautiful, but it's very difficult. And um, I live in the Midwest. We don't have hills, much less mountains. So uh, the only avalanche is when the snow plow goes past after you've just finished shoveling your driveway and pushes it all back. So um, we don't do that. But the three that are most common are the area search or live find dogs. These are off lead dogs. You see these a lot. I think John works with a team that does it. You see this a lot out west where pe hikers are lost. We don't know where they are. They left the camp and you start going and you work, your dog works off lead and you send your dog out and your dog's trained to find whatever living human is there. Give a trained final response, an alert, come back and get you and lead you to the person, okay? Um, area search dogs where the dogs 
that go after a tornado. They're the dogs to find survivors. They're the dogs that went into the Twin Towers on 9-11 looking for survivors. Okay. Um, and then similar but different are the human remains detection dogs, otherwise known as cadaver dogs. And their job is to search for um, odor. They are trained to detect the odor of decomposition. Okay, so they can do this in a high trees, somebody hung himself, um, buried, uh, suicide who might be above ground and in water. So they can train for drowning victims. Most of those dogs work off lead, although you can work them on lead. And depending on where you are, we're in an urban environment. So many of our dogs, if you're next to a, a four lane highway, you're gonna put your dog on lead, okay? Um, and um, finally, it's sense specific. And that's where I think otter hounds are um, good. That um, they can, they are really like their bloodhound ancestors. We all have bloodhound in our dogs. They track like bloodhounds. And yes, dogs can scent on water. <laughs> I love the old convict escaping from the prison and all the bloodhounds are after him and they just jump in a lake, in a stream and the bloodhounds walk up and go, oh my God, I don't do water. Well, they do do water. So uh, if you're ever convicted and escaping from prison, don't use the water trick. Um, so um, otter hounds are like bloodhounds. They're cold those dogs. They can track very old trails, okay? And we have rural and urban trailing. Most of these cases are kids who wander away, um, dementia patients who wander away, um, teenagers running away, all kinds of things. So that's all I have to say. I hope there's more questions. Silence. Um, there's no questions on my end. What about you, Robin? Oh, you're on mute. Coming. Thank you. Thank you for telling me that. Um, I don't have any specific questions. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, Eileen's screen down. Please do. And there we go. And anybody that has any questions, feel free to open your mic and ask. And while you're doing that, I think Karma might have a funny story. <laughs> or maybe not funny here a story it's, I do, fun. it's fun i do have um a list of tracking books excellent um I, they're the last slide if you want to flip that up again oh, i'm sorry I, oh you're gonna have to you're gonna have to go to your screen share part and hit the button again i'm sorry okay sorry um really? try to find that yes um you, what i could just say is go to dog wise I think this is there you it. Go. Coming up. Hey. Uh, Dogwise.com has most of these. And these are just a selection of books. So if anybody wants them, they can email me. They don't have to write it down furiously. But I'm not good with books. I'm one of those people that has to be out in the field watching and seeing. But if you are somebody who loves to read books, these are some I would recommend. We can't see that slide. Uh, probably because it's minuscule. Um, I am trying to get it. Bring it from mine if you want. Oop. Oh, it's doing the thing again. Here, let me, let me, I can just do it from your, I have your. Yeah, it's just the last slide I forgot, sorry. Yeah. I'm going to get rid of mine. Um, and if there's a problem, just tell people to um, contact me and I'll be glad to send them. Sure. And we'll send out an email to everybody that participated and uh, have any of those links on there. We also can put it on the YouTube video. So all of that is on there. Here Here we we go. Go. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay. Tracking from the ground up, tracking dog, modern, enthusiastic. Tracking. 
dog from Dogwise. Um, and then we <laughs> has most of the books. There's Ooh. tons of books out there. Is that Dogwise.com? Is that a website or yes? Yeah. And then the websites that you gave us earlier on the um, equipment, you said J and J and Elite Canine. Was there another one that you mentioned? Um, Bridgeport, Bridgeport has nice stuff. Um, is that Bridgeport.com? I believe so. It's in Michigan. And then EliteK9.com? Yeah. Um, oh, there's a million of them. If you look at harnesses, um, you'll find tons of them from agitation harnesses to tracking harnesses to all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't know if Amazon carries them. They probably do, but um, I haven't found any. Eileen, we got, a, we got another question. Oops, sorry, Robin. How do you determine the proper size for your dog? They all have measurements. I think if you have a full-grown otter hound, it's a large. Um, it may be an extra large, but they, if you get to the website, they will show you how to measure. And what I find with otter hounds, and I think it's true of bloodhounds, we were laughing, um, that they have a small neck in comparison to their chest. So that um, I always have the smallest neck girth. Um, you know, it seems like the chest size of an otter hound, should, they think should have the neck of a Rottweiler, but we don't. So um, they'll, they'll show you how to measure. But I would say, I think most of the leather ones are at a large. Um, I do have an extra large water one. It's too small for spirit. It's embarrassing, but she has to suck it in. I will put all of those on um, both the YouTube um, and the uh, thank you email that I sent out. Um, if I were going to start tracking, I would not go out and spend 50 or $75 on a harness. I just wouldn't. I'm cheap. Um, I would go to the $20 harness and if you like it and decide this is something you're going to do, it took me years and years and years to get a leather harness and a leather line. Um, so I just, you know, um, just a thought. I see if you like it, you can use webbing nylon harnesses, you know, you don't have to, you, you can spend $100 for a harness. Um, the leathers run 50 to 70, I think. It's a lot of money. Both of the cheese. We, we had a question from Ron uh, earlier. What is the best time of day to track? Um, morning is great. Um, because the earth is exhaling in the morning and scent is coming up. Um, the worst time to track is, um, High noon on a hot day, we won't even take the dogs out in the 90 degree when it's 98 because there's no, A, there's no scent. B, um, we work on pavement and that's horrible. The heat coming off asphalt, um, the scent is evaporated. We, we usually would wait till evening then before we go out. So morning or evening are the best times. You know, um, there's more scent. It's obviously the more dampness is the best time. You know, I love it when we have a tracking test and it rained last night and it's not raining in the day, but you know, there's moisture. Scent is attracted to moisture. It's attracted to shade. It's attracted to low spots. So, you know, especially when you're starting a dog, go when there's the most scent and where the most scent is. I don't think I have any more questions on my end. Robin, are you seeing any more? That's all I have seen. Um, feel free, anybody that has another question, if you want to open up your mic and, and uh, just go ahead and ask, go ahead. Carmen, did you have a story? Oh, sure. Yeah, that was a story. Oh, geez. All righty. So get ready for some fun. Uh, back in uh, ye old times, when I was just a young sprout of, say, 13, uh, I was an avid 4-H'er. Uh, and I was in dog club. 
And one of the aspects that we had to do was learn something about a working dog sport or any, like any sort of utility from the inside. Uh, and of course, my first thought was a very close friend of ours. Uh, you might know her. Uh, her name is Joni Bernard, and she has a lovely otter hound uh, from Eileen by the name of Jester. <laughs> and um, Jester uh, was in a group of dogs. I mean, there was shepherds, labs, uh, golden retrievers, and he was the only otter hound. Um, and I was to play the part of the runaway. So essentially my backstory was I had a fever of 104 and I was overheating and I was stripping off clothes, the articles along the trail. And, you know, I had run out into the forest. And basically what they did is they gave me a mosquito net. They threw me up onto a tree branch. So I was up a tree. Uh, put the net over me and said, stay as silent as you can and see what happens. Uh, there was probably three dogs before Jester went. Uh, the first one just kind of, it, it had my trail. And you have to understand, if you've ever been in, inside a Michigan forest, it is thick, it is covered in leaves, and there are ditches everywhere that you probably wouldn't see until you're on the other side of the tree. But there was a ravine as well. Uh, there was a dog that was on the other side of the ravine. It had my trail, had my trail, and it just kept on going. Uh, the second dog actually managed to get down the ravine, and then it kind of, you know, sniffed the tree a little bit and then kept on going. Third dog got to the tree, made laps around it, I guess got confused, and bolted back down the ravine. Now, Jester was fun because he wasn't like the other dogs. You know, you could tell he was thinking about it. You know, he was still, you know, gung-ho for it, but you, he was methodical when he was tracking, all right? And he goes, you know, he, he's working his way along the ridge line. He goes down the ravine, you know, all that stuff. He gets to the tree base and he starts sniffing up the tree base where I climbed. He kind of gets down on all fours spins around in a circle, sits, and looks directly up at me. And Joni says, he indicated on you. I'm like, okay. And that was my signal to get out of the tree and go, oh my God, good boy, you know, all that stuff. So long and short of it, I had the funnest time of my life at 13 sitting up in a tree for two hours with a mosquito net. All that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that story. Does anybody else have any questions? Good opportunity to ask Eileen. I just hope you do it. Um, I want you to, you know, otter homes are really very, well, I, I always call, tell my bloodhound friends that they have smooth coated otter homes <laughs> and they accuse me of having wire hair bloodhounds, but um, they are A, unknown, you know, and B, I can't tell you, I've gone to a lot of seminars and I'll be there and people come up and say, can I see your dog? You know, they've never seen one like it. They don't know. And they always, they know bloodhounds. And one person said, does he ever make any noise? And <laughs> never. <laughs> silent trackers. And if you've been with a load of bloodhounds, you can appreciate why he asked that question. Um, so, I mean, you know, they do create a stir. Um, I think people are impressed when they see them work. And that makes me um, feel good that, you know, they say, you know, then sometimes they come up and say, do you still have those grizzly bear kind of dogs? And, you know, um, so they, they've got, you know, they get a rep. So, but they are fun to work. So I highly recommend it. If anybody wants to ask any questions or anything, please do. If you wanna, if you live anywhere in my area or wanna travel in June, we will put up the tracking information. We will be doing tracking at the supported entry of Purina Farms. And um, love to work with you, so. It's very fun. I, I've done just a little bit of tracking um, with our otter hound, and it's a lot of fun just to see them work. 
Um, cause they're so happy about it. They're like, thank you for doing that. And you're like, who knew? It's, it's really fun. Like yeah. they were born to do it or something. Yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. They are in charge in tracking. They are in charge. You have to, you have to, you know, work together and it's a constant work, but they are the ones with the notes. So you have to, your job is to read them and to support them. Um, but not to tell them where to go. And so I think that's why they like it. Anybody who's been in an obedience class where they spend 15 minutes on sit knows why otter hounds don't like that approach. So this is very different. Okay, so I have a question. <laughs> Hi. What if your what if your dog takes off and you can't keep up with them? <laughs> what do you do? I mean, because you can't. You're not supposed to pull back on them, right? Yeah, I always pull back on mine. Okay. Otherwise, I'd be flat on my face all the time. Okay. <laughs> um, Huey ran his X in eight minutes. Okay. Most of my dogs do their T's in under four, so I just hang on. Um, I've been known to wrap the lead behind me. So they have to pull my whole body rather than just my arms. Mm -hmm. um, and my dog thinks she's a bad shoe because I always yell, easy spirit. Um, <laughs> that's how everybody knows where I am because they hear me going, easy. Um, she's very strong. She's very fast. And I always pull back on her. If I didn't, I would, she would be dragging me on my stomach. So, um, yeah, pull back. And, of course, the more you pull back, the more they resist. Um, uphill is fine because she'll pull me uphill. Finn would pull me uphill. Uh, downhill is terrifying because they pull you downhill at fast clip. And I've been known to grab onto trees to survive. Yeah. So, um, but um, I'm still alive. And I'm old, so if I can do it, you can do it. Eileen, uh, mm -hmm. quick question. We've talked about all of this, you know, harnesses and leads and all of the equipment for the dog, but what are some of the equipments for the handlers? I mean, special boots, gloves, coats, difficulties in the field to watch out for? Um, no, I, um, I do wear hiking boots. Um, and... Um, you know, jeans are fine. Uh, don't wear fleece. If you get into those thickums or burrs, you'll hate yourself if you wear fleece. Um, I have a picture in the current issue of The Voice coming out of the trail that Spirit ran through stickites, stickites. And when she got to the person, I was so proud of her for keep going. She could not see uh, her or she had so many burrs. Her eyes were plastered shut. Her ears were plastered shut. She looked like the creature from the lagoon. Um, people didn't even know it was a dog except for the nose. And she kept going. So I would wear anything that doesn't get furs. Um, jeans are great because, you know, those multiflora roses are hard on your legs. Um, yeah, I just, I'm not a fashion plate, you know, it, it, it just what, if it's cold, wear something warm. If it's hot, wear something that, you know, you can run in, um, whatever makes you happy. I use gloves all the time because of the way she pulls and my hands get cold. So I wear gloves. Any but, particular kind of gloves that you use? Uh, in the winter, the warmer, the better. Um, in the summer, just something that isn't slippery, you know, like if, uh, garden gloves that have, um, you know, kind of a whatever, not material, rubbery stuff. Yeah, that's good. I just for a grip. But no, I, you, that's the nice thing about tracking. It's cheap. You get your dog a harness, you get your dog a long line and you go out and you do it. Great use for all those things that come out of the dryer and washing all by itself that you'll never see the other, sh uh, you know, sock again. Um, great use for hot pads. Nobody uses hot pads anymore. They make wonderful tracks. 
bandanas. I think probably next year we'll have great number of masks on the track. <laughs> we'll all have them. So it's all of that stuff. It's, you know, you can use when you get into VST, you know, um, metal plates from, um, you know, um, electric outlets and stuff like that. Anything you've got lying around. It's really cheap. How about carrying water? Always. Yeah, you can always water your dog on an AKC track. You can't feed them. You can't play with them. Don't bring toys. Um, but you always can bring water and always do because even if it's cold, those dogs are working hard. Um, so I always bring water. I don't have love water too. Do you put your scent on those articles? Like, do you rub them? Um, you know, it's funny because yes, some people, track layers usually sleep with the articles overnight. You know, they're going to give the dog the best opportunity. And I'm laughing because the first time I went to a seminar, uh, a search seminar, the guy goes, there's your article and throws a cigarette butt down. And I went, oh, okay. And, and the dog tracked from it the dog track from handle of a car, but you know, yeah. So you, you want the, you know, the track layers sent on, not yours particularly because you don't want them to follow you. But you know, obviously if you're standing there, your dog is going to follow the other person. I'm glad that we have a puppy watching, adorable puppy, Cody. Now yep. start learning, right? Where's the puppy? Cody Wright has a puppy on the screen. Oh, good, because I can't see everybody on the screen. Um, Mr. Higgins' yeah. brother. Oh, Higgins is in his crate sleeping because otherwise he'd be obnoxious. But yeah, <laughs> he, he doesn't have an off button yet. So, but he, he loves it. I mean, I've started him. I've started him on HRD. You know, they're like kids. Yeah. Um, Every, they're always learning, even if you're not always teaching them. Can you start a dog that's older, or is it difficult? Sure, I started um, Shona at nine. Okay. She was at nine and a half. And maybe she was a little shy of nine. But yes, any age. Awesome. Uh, sometimes older dogs love it. You know, they've got something to do, and they're important. Yeah. Dogs love being in charge. Otter hounds love. And I'll be honest, I think hounds are better at tracking because they're not so obedience driven. Some of the dogs that have trouble, fin you know, in some of the advanced things are the very high obedience dogs because they're used to looking at their owner for, well, you tell me what to do. And of course, we don't know what to do. So. I know how that is. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's great. And um, I think you'll have a wonderful time. And feel free to call me, email me. I, I'd love to get everybody out there doing what literally they were pretty well bred to do. For sure. I found that they're not crittery. They not they really are not. If you started, you tell them what to do. They just love the following that scent. And so for Tom Devlin, the reason they're not interested in articles is because they're still sent there. And my dogs almost always follow the track layer out at the end of the track. They're still tracking. They're still, they don't care if there's a glove there. You're ecstatic because you got a title, but they're just keep going. No. Any other questions? I want to thank everybody for coming, but especially Eileen. You did a fantastic job, and we sure do appreciate it. Um, I, I really, I really do appreciate all of the help that you give us. Um, the next Otter Talk's coming up. We have another um, the Nose Nose Otter Talk on the 14th of October. Um, is going to be a scent detection and nose work. Otter Talk, and then on the 22nd of October, we have a uh, Immune System and Titers uh, webcast with Joelle and Gregory. Um, so feel free to join us for that. Um, you're always welcome to 
invite your other um, members of the pack. It's not just Otter Home Club members. Everybody is welcome. So feel free to spread the word. Um, also, we'll be putting the recording of this Otter Talk on the Otter Home Club of America YouTube channel. And I'll put the uh, book list and the links for the harnesses on there as well. And I'll uh, send those links out with my uh, thank you for joining us email too. So thank you very, very much to everybody. Carmen, thank you very much. Appreciate everybody being here. If you have any other questions, speak up. Otherwise, have a great night. And it was good to see everybody. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Eileen. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye, Carmen. Bye, Robin. <laughs> Bye, Cindy. Bye, everyone. Bye, <laughs> Bye from Kelsey. Bye. Good night. Thanks, Joel. Sorry you were in the wrong room at first. Well, it's okay. I didn't know I was still on. I was trying to